Long Live Your Turtle here. In this video, I'm going to be servicing my Fluval FX6. Why am I doing this? Because it's not working properly. And what it's doing is it's pumping out a tiny bit of water when it's fully on and operational. That's not correct, obviously. The Fluval FX6 is known for pumping 900 gallons per hour. I'm getting like probably a quarter of a gallon uh, two hours. So that's not gonna do it. With this giant tank behind me, things are gonna get dirty fast. So I went out and picked up the Fluval FX6 service kit. Now, if you have an FX4, this is gonna be a very similar process. But in this kit, we have a new impeller. We have all the new O-rings that we're gonna need to install in our filter because this is kind of an older filter that I really have not done any maintenance on. So I suspect one or some of the O-rings are worn out, are broken or unseated so that my filter is not purging the air inside of it correctly and the pressure is not building up enough to push the water around like it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna be going all out and installing all of the service kit items just to knock it out of the park and make sure we have no issues going forward. Let's get to it. All right, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna unplug the unit so it stops pumping water. And then you wanna turn these valves to the off position, which they are now. That's on, that is off. And then just like you assembled it, you push in these little tabs and you can pull off the hoses. And I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna bring this over to my workbench. All right, if you have this filter, you know the drill. Let's take the top off, unscrew, take the lid off, and I'm gonna dump it out. You don't need to see that. All right, with our filter ready to be serviced, what do we have in the kit? We've got our bushing tool with a bushing on the end of it. We have three different types of O-rings. We have our impeller, and the only tool you're actually gonna need in your tool belt is a Phillips head screwdriver, which everyone's got one, right? All right, and then bonus on top, I'm gonna have this silicone lubricating grease for all our O-rings. This isn't required, but definitely recommended for any kind of O-ring installation like this. All right, first O-ring we're tackling here is the lid O-ring. This is a giant O-ring that goes around the perimeter in that little groove I'm showing. And the hardest part about this one was getting it out. So I tried to use one of the tools they provided, actually not for this purpose, but didn't end up working anyway. So what I ended up doing was just tapping the lid on that hose there on my workbench and it kind of worked itself out of the groove so I could grab it and just pull it right out. I did a quick inspection to see, hey, was there any damage on this? Is this causing my filter malfunction? Nah, threw it away. Let's grab the new one and you'll notice it's not very slick. And that's why I grabbed that silicone lubricating grease. And this type of product is great for lubricating O-rings like this, which basically protects and extends the life of your O-ring by not allowing dust or oil grime to stick to it, especially when you're installing it or when you're maintaining your filter and emptying it out and having to reinstall the lid over and over again. It also prevents the O-ring from getting stuck in the part of the groove, but maybe not, and binding up and causing tears and rips because it didn't seat correctly in the groove. So this sort of silicone is just going to make your O-ring last a lot longer. And as you saw, it doesn't take very much, just a light surface rubbing around your O-ring and then put it right back into that groove where you took the old one out. Quite easy to get this back in there, and then you're all set. Let's move on to the next O-ring. Now those next O-rings, there's four of them, two on each of these connectors, which are called click fit connectors, which you took off earlier. And these are kind of tricky to get off and I had to take uh, quite a bit of time trying to figure out the best way. And what I came up with was just using a paper clip and getting underneath there and just frying it up basically and throwing it off once I had it off a little bit from the groove. And it was pretty simple once I got the first time. Again, we're gonna use that silicone on the new ones and we're gonna just put them right back into the grooves you took them out of. This is very easy once you figure out where these are and where they need to go. Hardest part is just getting them off. Now the service kit did not come with any sort of O-ring for the drain at the bottom of the filter. Now, I don't know if there's actually an O-ring in there, but I suspect there is, but it's not something I use often, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, next step is to remove the motor housing from our canister filter. Now this just has four Phillips head screws. So you're gonna grab that screwdriver, remove all of the screws and be really sure you'd never lose these. They're small screws and they're very specific to this filter. So put those in a nice safe place. Now let's take a look at our motor. Oh, wow. That is our culprit for our dysfunctional filter. I have some sintered pearl glass 
Blogging up that impeller. It's actually a great biological media made by Eheim, but it doesn't belong in your impeller. And that is definitely causing some performance loss. Now I'm showing you the O-ring for our motor, and that's one we're going to replace. We're also going to be replacing that entire motor assembly. Uh, it has a little bushing that I'm going to show you in a second, but here is the O-ring, and that's your impeller with your magnet on it, all pre-assembled. Get rid of all that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to install our bushing. So it comes with this little bushing installer tool, which is just that plastic tube with the bushing already on the end of it. And what they also give you is this little metal tool with a little end that you can grab the existing bushing. And this took quite a little bit to grab it because it's not just a simple thing to pull out. And I finally got it. And it's actually a lot easier to install the new one, which you just take the tool, you put it down there, it kind of snaps in and you pull out the tool and you better not have that bushing because there it is in the bushing housing. So once you have that in there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that O-ring, you're gonna put that silicone lubricating sealant on it. This is kind of a strange one because it doesn't really feel like it's working until you actually get it in there. So I'm just showing you, you can put that magnetized impeller in there. But what you wanna do is just kind of put the O-ring kind of around where you expect it to be. And the next step is just to put the impeller into the impeller housing there and rotate it around until it clicks in. And then it's gonna put a little pressure on that O-ring. And that's all you're gonna need. Just make sure it's evenly seated around the black flange of the impeller you just installed, as you can see in the video here. And that's it, that's all your service kit parts. Reinstall that impeller housing onto your canister filter with those four Phillips head screwdrivers that you did not lose. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting my sintered glass pearls in the middle basket because I own the bottom basket, so they easily made their way out and into the impeller, clogging it and causing the filter to work very poorly. But with that, install your filter as you had before, just making sure that everything is connected properly. Let's plug it in and find out. Now that's what I'm talking about. Lots of flow, filter is working great. Service kit worked great, glad I didn't buy a new filter, right? And that's it for the Fluval FX6 service kit installation. I have a whole review on the Fluval FX6 filter. Like I said, this is very similar to the Fluval FX4. Service kit's gonna be very similar as well. Awesome filters. If you like this video, I have a bunch of other DIY type videos on my channel. If you want a turtle basker like the one you see in this video, check out my Etsy store at Long Live Your Turtle. And if you like this video, hit that like button for me. If you like this content, hit that subscribe button for me. And long live your turtle.